Kyoto University in 2003. He joined at the Department of Chemistry University of Southern California as a research scholar until 2005. After that, he's returned back to Japan. Now he's working at the uh, Terra Health Sensing and Imaging Team as a senior research scientist. So his presentation title is uh, Structure and Dynamics of Our Water in a Polymer Bureau, studied by Terra Health Spectroscopy. Please stand. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this symposium. And uh, today's my talk is about the bound water studied by Terra Health So uh, let me briefly uh, again uh, show you the, how Terra Health Spectroscopy works. So uh, we are mainly observing vibration spectra in Terra Health, and uh, as you know, Terra Health is very low frequency. So, uh, we mainly observe very heavy uh, mass moving with uh, weak interaction. So, uh, for example, we see uh, intermolecular structure in the heads, and also when we observe large molecules, uh, we see uh, vibration of uh, uh, higher order conformation or something. So, this is an example. So, this is a uh, there is a social spectral polymer, a PHB, this is our favorite polymer. And uh, when we measure amorphous PHB and measure crystalline PHB, we see completely different spectra because uh, it reflects the intermolecular population. So especially in the crystalline form of PHB, we see some vibration bands uh, which is originated in the crystal structure of PHB. <coughs> So in this decade, uh, decade uh, we have been studied for such a polymer uh, spectra, and we developed the spectroscopic technique and also the FD calculation technique for, for the assignment of such spectra. For example, uh, this band is the, the vibration like this. So and uh, we found that uh, uh, in such polymers, uh, we often see the vibration of hydrogen. And the hydrogen bond is a key to understand uh, the spectrum. So here I summarize the hydrogen bond we can observe in their heads, uh, especially for macromolecules. For example, uh, when we observe uh, PLA, PHB, polyesters, uh, which has CHOA4C hydrogen bonds, uh, we often see uh, intense vibrational bands at uh, 2.0 to 2.5 terahertz. And on the other hand, when it has NSOC hydrogen bond, we often see uh, intense band at 3.2 to 3.4 terahertz. And on the other hand, uh, as uh, talked by previous uh, speakers, uh, we have intermolecular hydrogen band vibration of H2O, which is intense uh, at uh, around 5.2 terahertz. This is very famous. And uh, actually, water has uh, two kinds of vibration in terahertz. Uh, one is intermolecular stretching, and the other one is vibration. Vibration is something like this mode. Uh, it's located around 10 to 20 terahertz. So this kind of hydrogen bond vibration has been studied very well for in the, these decades. So now we are going to see much complicated system which is bound water in polymers. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to talk with uh, about two <coughs> topics. One is uh, bound water in EVOH uh, and another one is bound water in nylon 6. So EVOH is uh, ethylene vinyl polymer which it's a polymer of ethylene and vinyl alcohol, a very simple polymer. And uh, this is a major product of Kurare. Kurare is the Japanese polymer industry. And uh, they use this polymer for the uh, gas barrier film, which is used for wrapping of uh, foods product. But there is one problem to use this polymer, that uh, this polymer changes with humidity. So this is a plot of the uh, oxygen transmission rate against the humidity. And at higher humidity, uh, it becomes worse. 
So they want to know why uh, it changes with uh, hydration. So and, uh, I propose that uh, we can use dialects to see the dialects of water. So then we started collaboration research with Curare, and uh, they gave us uh, a product with thickness about this size. And they gave, gave me a six kind of samples uh, named like this. The number 24, 32, 44 represents the SIRA content. So as the number decreases, the OH concentration increases. The letter A, L and H represents annealing temperature. Uh, the H is a higher crystalline. So we prepare the sample like this. So first we vacuum dry at 40 degrees Celsius and measure the dry sample. And we hydrated the sample for two weeks with a chamber with H2O and salt and measure the hydrated sample. So we can control the humidity by changing the salt like this. So we measure the 10, type, 10 kinds of humidity condition. And for the measurement, uh, we just using conventional method uh, to get us from infrared spectrometer. So it's just the same as you are using. But uh, we have uh, two special equipment. One is superconducting barometer. So usually people use uh, liquid heavy cooling barometer for terahertz measurement. But uh, uh, our system is liquid heavy free. So uh, we can work 24 hours, seven days. And also we uh, built a booster sample holder, which is uh, terahertz wave is linearly polarized and the uh, polymer film is good, uh, set in booster angle, which prevents uh, fringe in the sample. So we can measure very precise spectra using this setup. And also, we measure three samples for each condition and take average. So this is the result of, uh, for this sample. So this is raw spectra. So black solid line shows the dry sample. And as increasing the humidity, the absorption coefficient increases. So we subtracted the dry spectra from humid spectra, like this. So you can see the obtained delta alpha is completely different from the original picture. And the center frequency is very close to the vibrational band of water. So we conclude that we are looking at uh, spectra of bound water. OK. So uh, first, we compare the, how it changes with the samples. So we measure the six samples at 100% uh, humidity. So black, red, blue line shows the difference of OH concentration. So this shows that uh, higher OH concentration makes higher absorbance. Solid line and dust line shows the difference of crystallinity. So higher crystallinity makes lower absorption. So these two facts uh, take that right like this. So water molecules are trapped around OH group in the amorphous EVOH. OK, so we can use uh, 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 We also measure the weight of the sample. So we can determine how much water content in the sample. And uh, actually, uh, basically, it's uh, proportional to the uh, 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 intensity. So we can plot like this. So the, uh, for example, uh, by using this line, uh, we can quantitatively uh, assign how much water uh, is the polymer period. So it's an accuracy of 1%. So uh, uh, there is one point I want to mention that the, if we take the water content to 100%, which is just water, uh, the absorbance comes to about 400 in a centimeter. Uh, this value will be used in the next slide. OK. So next, uh, we compared the spectrum of bound water with 
by the <laughs> So this spectra is taken by this literature. And we see the difference. So first of all, the baseline is different. So the spectra of liquid water it rises up at higher frequency, but uh, that's not in so much in terms of it. And also, absorb absorbency is uh, lower. So the estimated absorption coefficient of boundary water is 400 sigma centimeter, which is much, much lower than that in the rapid water. So these two parts shows that there is something missing in the baseline, which must be vibration motion. So there is a tail of vibration motion here. But uh, maybe uh, this is missing in the band water. Also, the peak top, band top, is different. So in the liquid water, the band top is 5.3 terahertz, but it's blue shifted in terahertz. Uh, sorry, blue shifted in band water. Actually, uh, the, this is uh, the spectrum of ice. So there is uh, no regulation band appears in this region. So I think the band water is somewhere be in between ice and liquid water. Most probably, uh, the bound water is uh, forming somehow amorphous ice or something like that. Okay, so for more detailed spectroscopy, uh, we apply the analytical method, uh, statistical method. Uh, in this case, we apply the PCMW2D. So PCMW2D is a kind of uh, two-dimensional correlation spectroscopy. Uh, maybe I don't have enough time to explain about this, but uh, simply speaking, the, it just shows the, oh sorry, just shows the, the der derivative first and second derivative spectra is a parameter. So in the Hinkner's plot, it shows the first derivative of uh, absorption coefficient against humidity. OK, let me show the result. So this is a PCMW2D plot of uh, uh, one sample. And this is synchronous, and this is asynchronous. So this is frequency, and this is humidity. So first, uh, we realized that uh, at the low humidity region, only this area changing, no higher frequency component. So that means around this humidity, only stretching is increasing. On the other hand, here, uh, around 70%, higher frequency components uh, invades the spectrum. So that means a vibrational motion appears in here. So let's go back to the original data. So this is uh, absorption intensity with, uh, as a function of humidity. So this is 6.5 and 8.5. So uh, at lower, lower humidity, uh, it's increasing linearly due to the stretching motion. But uh, at higher humidity, the vibration increases. So there is some, some point. It's, it's about uh, 70 percent. So actually, uh, it is known that uh, the glass transition temperature of this polymer changes with humidity. So this is half. And uh, our room temperature is here. And now 70 percent <coughs> is uh, just a crossing point. So, <coughs> By adding water, water helps to change the polymer chain from glassy state to rubbery state. So we, we can compress the more bound water with regulation motion, which is much more like liquid water, bulk water, makes uh, uh, induced microbrownian motion of the polymer chain. And then we can go back to the first question. So why the oxygen transmission increase at higher humidity? So maybe this is because uh, water helps to uh, microbrownian motion, and it uh, helps all the transmission interface. If I have time, I, I will explain about the next talk. So now we are going uh, to measure another sample, 9 6. So uh, it's an ongoing project, but so uh, I will show you uh, 
how what water in nano six looks like. And nano six takes two kind of crystal structure. One is alpha form and the other one is gamma form. Uh, we can see the difference clearly in the X-ray diffraction pattern uh, in alpha form and gamma form. Also in terahertz, we can see the difference. This difference clearly. Uh, there are several peaks, but uh, up here, seven terahertz, we see characteristic band of alpha form. So, for example, when we change the temperature of gamma nylon, it changes to alpha form. Uh, it's called, called blue transition of nylon 6. And uh, this is the spectral of temperature dependent uh, nylon gamma. And uh, the character characteristic alpha peak increases at higher temperature. So, such kind of crystalline structure change occurs with a high duration. So first we uh, measure the nylon gamma. So first we vacuum dry the sample and hydrate it, and the vacuum dry again and measure the spectrum. When the hydration condition is lower humidity, nothing happens. So black line changes to red line at hydrated condition, and when dried out, it comes back to blue line. Nothing happens. But if the humidity is higher, so when it's hydrated, uh, the 7 terahertz peak appears. And uh, even if we dry it out, it does not go back to the gamma. That means uh, alpha to gamma, gamma to alpha structure change in this hydration. So we can directly observe such kind of crystalline form structure uh, by using the But anyway, uh, so uh, we want to see the bound water structure itself. So then we measure the nylon alpha. So we vacuum dry the nylon alpha and hydrate the sample, and then measure the spectra by drying the sample. So uh, by drying the sample, the mass is uh, decreasing exponentially, and we also see this change in terahertz spectrum. So the same was uh, if we reach its case, uh, we subtracted the humid sample by dry sample spectra and see the spectral feature of bound water. So surprisingly, the spectra of bound water is completely different. <coughs> Uh, with the uh, previous <coughs> Actually, we fit this curve with uh, three, uh, three Gaussian functions, and we found very beautifully fitted by three Gaussian functions. And we don't know, actually, we, right now, we don't know what is the origin of this band, so uh, we may need some calculation, initial calculation to see what, what's going on. But anyway, uh, when we change the uh, water content in the sample, uh, it linearly changes, almost linearly changes. So one, one of them may be come from the vibration band, or I don't know, vibration, vibration band disappeared or not. But uh, yeah, in future, I will show, I can show the detail of this spectrum. So uh, I summarize my talk. And uh, in the past part, uh, we observed the uh, water in evaluated films and uh, water absorbed in the whole pass and the vibration disappeared but because of the flows of water. And uh, but the vibration appeared again at higher uh, humidity, which makes glass plant. And uh, now we are doing a study for 906 uh, to see uh, much different types of bound water in other fields. So this is our acknowledgement, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Time is coming, so if you have any question, one question, short question. Thank you very much, really. Um, and I was very happy to see um, a little bit uh, the down of multivariate analysis in terahertz spectroscopy, which is I expect to see even more. Mm -hmm. And um, one thing, uh, could you please repeat again because I think this is very important: the, the relationship between oxygen 